What is up again, YouTube? After releasing my first video and rereading what I didn't know was part one script, I came to the realization that I didn't say everything I needed to say in part one. So for part two, let's jump right into it because I want to shine some more light on the mental changes of pornography. I want to go a little deeper and I want to talk about how these mental changes affect more than what we see. First conflict that I believe has increased in severity due to pornography is the thought of everything being sexually instantaneous and the entitlement of sex. As I said previously in part one, within the past 10 to 15 years, we've had the ability to access any pornography we desire in a matter of minutes. Now some people take longer than most and get to page 65 on Pornhub until they finally found what they're looking for. <laughs> and if that's the case, I might want to get checked. But my point still stands. And with pornography, you're going to get what you want, when you want it, and how you want it. Many have that same logic and thought process towards sex in relationships. I'm going to give you a scenario that shows just how detrimental this can be. There is this guy. He's been watching porn for quite some time. And throughout his years of watching porn, he has gotten used to getting what he wants, when he wants it, and how he wants it, in terms of sexual pleasure. Well, over the years, while his brain is still transforming and growing, his mind has been slowly conforming to this toxic mindset of instant satisfaction. Well, one day he meets this girl. She's beautiful. She's intelligent. She understands his memes. She has everything he's ever wanted in a girl. In time, the two go on a date. They go shopping. They go out to dinner and they just kick it off strong. They start connecting. They start building a relationship past the friend zone. They share memories, they share their beliefs, they share all things personal, what they like, what they dislike, what makes them happy, what makes them mad. But at the end of dinner, he asks her if she wants to come back to his place to finish the night with a movie. Now she likes him. So she says, I'd love to. A part of him is thinking, oh, about to give her the old razzle dazzle. Little does he know, she has a bad history with sex on first dates. Sex on the first date isn't her thing. She promised herself to not let it happen again. No matter how amazing a guy is, sex on the first date, that's not her anymore. And she has held on to that promise. She, like normal people, wants to build up that sexual tension. Kiss on the first date, kiss more on the second, and kiss even more, and maybe even touch a little on the third date. And after a few weeks of dating, that sexual tension is built up, boom! Here comes a grand slam. Best sex ever. At least that's how things should go, correct? Well, the two get back to his place, they talk, they laugh, they enjoy the moment, they enjoy each other's presence. This whole night has gone just how he has wanted it to, just how he has planned it. Sooner or later they start kissing, and in his mind, he's expecting everything to play out. His hands get a little curious as she stops him for a second, and confidently tells him that she doesn't want sex that night, because she doesn't do sex on first dates. She draws a boundary with him and she expects him to understand and respect that boundary. But his whole night has just changed. This was not supposed to happen. He went out with her just like he wanted. She came back to his place just like he wanted. They kissed just like he wanted. Why can't they have sex just like he wanted? He is accustomed to getting what he wants when he wants it. So he doesn't respect her wishes. He thinks all that fun earlier was a waste of time because the ultimatum wasn't what he wanted. Sex. So he gets frustrated. His face shows it. She notices. And she knows he wants sex at that moment. And so does she. But she's not letting go of the promise she made to herself of no sex on the first date. She asks him what's wrong, knowing damn well what's wrong. 
And he replies, nothing. Don't worry about it. Now there's tension. Now there's tension. It's just not sexual tension. He blames her for playing him and adds, I gave you such a good night and you couldn't even give me sex to end it. Boy, everything's downhill. Everything is downhill. <laughs> she starts thinking that whole night was just for sex. Not to mention, if he can't respect her wishes and her desires, why the hell should she do the same to him? Now because of his outrage and the way he reacts, she leaves. That next day, he starts thinking and questioning why he fucked up. Why did he act like this? I'll tell you why. It's because he has been entitled to get what he wants. Because for as long as he's been looking at porn, in his mind, he's had the power to find the sex he wants, the sex he desires, with whoever he wants it with, and whenever he wants it. But now, he didn't get what he sexually wanted it, when he wanted it. This made him uncomfortable, and this made him mad. This caused him to chase off the one thing he was so close to having. And guess what? He's gonna go look at porn because he's stressed, he's depressed, he's emotional, and here we go, the same cycle. Now the roles of this scenario can very well be switched around. It could be a girl doing the same thing this guy did and end up being a guy that ends up doing what the girl did. Now I'm a guy. It's only appropriate for me to tell it from a viewpoint that I can relate to and understand to from the men's perspective, from the male's perspective. The second problem that has risen in effect due to pornography is a commitment issue. You all know exactly what I'm talking about. I'm talking about people being unsatisfied in relationships and the ability to, just like that, find someone new. <laughs> you, ever, you ever find that one video on Pornhub and it's your go-to? It's, it's your go-to, that's the easiest way I can put it. <laughs> well, the other day I mentioned how over time, the porn you look at no longer has the same effect on you as it did when you watched it the first time. You find a new video, it gets you hard as fuck. You watch it a second time, a third time, fourth time, a fifth time. Same thing, same effect, it feels good. But after a while, after watching the same video, you kind of get tired of it. Well, you get desensitized, that's a better word. You get desensitized and it takes more work to get off to it. As I just said, you have the ability to find what you want, so why work harder to come to a video if you could just type in a few letters in the search bar on Pornhub and you'll find a new video to give you a new experience? Well, you find a new video and you're right back to square one. This concept plays right into relationships. Why do you think so many people are divorced these days? Why is it so rare to find someone with the same love and commitment level our grandparents have for one another? When our grandparents were growing up, number one, pornography wasn't easily obtainable, if it even was attainable, and divorce was inconceivable back then. Now, it's a norm, and it's heartbreaking. But what's the prominent cause? I'll give you my confident opinion. The common denominator is pornography. I'm not saying porn is the sole and only cause to breakups and divorce, but think about it like this. In our young years, before we get exposed and started relationships, most of us discover pornography. And this is where it shapes our mind for future relationships, both sexually and emotionally. With porn, we get tired of the same videos and the same thoughts over time. So, we go find a new video because we have the power to do so. We get tired of the same person and the same sex and the same shit that we put up with, with them. So, we go find a new person because we have the power to do so with social media. You can type anything you want in the search bar on Pornhub the same way you can type anything you want into the search bar on Instagram or Facebook. Now, I've never been in a relationship and I think that's a good thing, <laughs> but I've done a lot of watching and observing of relationships, whether it be through social media, from friends, my siblings, and even my own parents. And pornography, it does more than just affect you. Look, I'm young, and some of you may wanna discredit me for doing these two videos because of that. I know I have so much more to learn and experience of life. 
I don't know anywhere near as much as doctors or people who study the effects of pornography. Those people have so much more knowledge in their brains compared to me on this topic, but I'm speaking from my heart. I'd much rather speak from my heart than to speak from my brain. And my heart knows that pornography, it, it, it affects everything in our lives, both men and women. Pornography is more than just watching content on a screen and getting sexual pleasure from it. It changes our brains of what we think and how we think. Our brains, our minds, our thoughts are the most important things in our lives. With our mind comes our body, how we look and how we feel. With our mind comes how we treat people, how we act around others, how we build relationships. With our mind comes how we see people. And pornography changes how we view certain people and how we interact with them negatively. Pornography changes how we deal with stress and the bullshit life has to offer negatively. Pornography changes us in more ways than we wish to see or admit negatively. Every one of you knows that but very few of you are willing to change it. We may not be able to change what people think of us, how people see us, or what people say about us, but we can change what we think of others, how we see others, and what we say about others. Let's stop looking at people objectively. Let's stop ruining relationships because of what our emotions influence us to do. Let's build real, authentic, heartfelt, and genuine relationships with people Let's be a light in a world that is surrounded by darkness. Let's all change this world, but it all starts with fighting the worst drug. Pornography. All of us. Let's go be unstoppable. Be someone people look up to. No matter how many times we fall, we fail or fuck up. Let's do the impossible. Do something the rest of the world says can't be done. Let's achieve the improbable. Be a symbol of what good really means in a world so bad. And lastly, you guys already know what I'm going to say. Let's go kick some ass.